everyone, it's Bethany. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Cricut Cheer. We're going to be doing a really easy print and cut project today, and we're going to be making little gift labels that we can put on our packages this year. So I'm going to show you how to do this. We're going to be doing print and cut. So as a reminder, you cannot do this on the Cricut Joy. I'm going to be using my Cricut Explore Air 2, and you can also use the Cricut Maker for this project. Unfortunately, the Cricut Joy just does not support print and cut. So what we're going to be using in terms of material, we have a really light list. We're only using printable vinyl, which I absolutely love. Whenever I see this in the store or if it's available online, I buy a couple packs because I love working with it. And there's so many things you can do with printable vinyl. You can make little decals for your machine, which I did with my machine here. And I will link a tutorial on how to do that. But print and cut is really easy. This printable vinyl is amazing to work with. You can also use sticker paper, but quite honestly, in my opinion, I do not find that I'm very fond of Cricut sticker paper. So I'm going to be opting to use the Cricut printable vinyl. I don't like the sticker paper because I feel like it's really difficult to load into my printer. And I find that I just usually don't have much success with it. So I just kind of have stopped using it. So printable vinyl is definitely my go-to. And then we're also going to just need a little weeding tool if you choose to weed out the extra um, and I'll show you how to do that. It makes it just a little bit easier to peel off your tags when it's time to use them. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hop into Cricut Design Space. I'm going to show you how easy it is to create your own labels and get them all designed. All right, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space. You guys have seen me use this file before when I did my Cricut Craft Gift Guide and I used it to make some personalized wine labels. And I'll link that tutorial if you missed it because it was really pretty, but I promise that this file was going to come back in use. I purchased this from designbundles.com and I'm going to use it as one of my designs for working and creating the little gift tags. I'm also going to be using another file that I purchased separately from Design Bundles and this file was um, little stockings. So it came with stockings on a line and then it came with the stockings individual. I'm going to go ahead and use the individual ones. I like this but I'm not really fond of it particularly for this. So I'm going to go ahead and just select the three stockings. I'll also place a link to a tutorial on how to upload images to design space that you have purchased elsewhere. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and insert my images, all three of them. And they're a little big, so they're going to take just a second to load. But there they are. They're so cute. So I can just get these all designed how I like that. And then I'm going to also go back to my uploads and just reference. Okay, so I had the red and then I just wanted to reference how it looked because I'm just going to recreate that look but without the line on it. So it looks like I have it in this order just like this. And I'm just going to make these a lot smaller. So I'm just going to get these all arranged and then I will size them down. Aren't these cute? I think they're so cute and they're watercolor looks like. I'm really fond of watercolor designs. I think they're just gorgeous. So I love how this looks. Okay, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, just like this. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight all three of them and I'm gonna say arrange, nope, I'm gonna say align I always get those two mixed up and I'm going to say align top just so that they are all even across the top. Then what I can do is I can go ahead and attach them all together so that they will be all in one little group and um, cut that way or print that way. Okay, so now I have the designs I'm going to be using. So again, both of these were on designbundles.com that I purchased. They were separate purchases um, and I'll link everything in the description box below. But I'm going to use a third that I found in the design space that's really cute. So I'm going to go to images and I think it was called holiday car. Let's see. Let's try holiday car with tree. Okay, so there it is. There's a couple versions and this is a really, really cute little image set. So if you click on this, and you click this little I, you can say view image sets and it will show you all of the images that were released together. So you have some draw um, images as well and then you have some print then cut. So I love all of these, they are so cute. I love the little Volkswagen Beetle. I think it's just adorable. So I'm trying to decide between this one, um, 
you know, having a more side look or this one. So I think I'm going to go with this. I think that's really, really cute. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see. It looks like I have two here. I'm going to exit out of one. So I just have one. And then I'm going to insert the images. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating my labels. So I'm just going to bring all of these to the side and then create my labels. I'm going to go back into images and I am going to click all the way out and I am going to type in rounded rectangle because I want to create a little label, but I want it to be a little softer on the corners. This is going to work perfectly. Don't mind the color or anything. You're just going to need the shape. So I'm going to click shift on my keyboard and then rotate this around in increments to the side here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to size it. So I am going to size this down to about three inches. I think that makes for a really good size label and I'll size everything up on my canvas in just a moment. I'm going to unlock this and then I'm going to make this about maybe an inch and a half in height. Okay, so that looks really, really good. Let me go ahead and size everything up so we can get a really good look at it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I am going to make my label white. And what we'll do is we will make our canvas a different color so that we can really see everything. So I clicked on blank canvas down in the bottom of the layers panel, come up to color. It's really hard to see, but there is a little white box here. And then we can just pick another color. So I can just pick green. That is a little green for me. We'll do a little lighter. Okay, so there we go. Now we can really see our label and everything. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to duplicate this once because I'm gonna do a couple different designs with this shape of label. I'm gonna size down my little stockings and I'm going to right click and say send to front and I'm gonna place them right on my label right here and that looks great okay so now what I can do I can even size those up just a hair okay that looks good I'm also going to do the same with this little Volkswagen Beetle so I'm going to size this down right click and say send a front and I'll put that on one as well so cute okay now what I'll do is I can grab my text box and I am going to search for the font called Farmland Fresh. I purchased this from, I purchased this actually in a um, farmhouse font bundle. So I'll try to link that bundle. It came with some really neat fonts that I like. Um, but if not, I'll try to link this individually as well. So you have a choice. Um, so I purchased it from design bundles or font bundles. And now I'm just going to write two. And then I'll do a space or um, I'll hit return and then say from. Okay, now what I'll do is just size this down. It's a cute little font. And I will just put it right on my little label here. Now what I can also do is I can say advanced and I can ungroup to lines so that they're individual for one another and I can put, oops, let me grab this. I can drag this up a little bit and then I can drag this down a little bit. That way it gives a little room to either write a name here or you can write it down here. It just gives a little bit more room to do some writing. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and attach those together right there so that everything looks just so. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And then, whoops, I always do that. And then I will bring it down to the next little label here. Okay, and again, you can size everything how you would like it. I think this is a good size for me. And I'll also show you later which pens that I have tested on the printable vinyl that work really well. Okay, so then I'm also going to show you how to do more of a round um, label. So now I'm gonna go to the shapes and I'm going to select a circle and I'm gonna make this white. And then I am going to make it a little bit bigger. I think this is going to be, actually I'm gonna size it down a little bit. This is going to be a three inch circle. Okay, so now I can right click on my wreath and say send to front and I'll size my wreath down. Okay, and I will just place that right on my little circle label there. I'm gonna go ahead and select both, say align and align center. And that looks pretty good, but I feel like it needs to come down a little bit. 
I always do that when I'm aligning too. I always let it do its thing, but then sometimes it just doesn't look quite right to me. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my sentiment, which is just the two from, and I'm going to duplicate that. And then I can just bring it right over here. And I'm going to bring it up a little bit. That way I have some room right here and right here to write. Okay, and again, you can design this however you would like. You can also, if you wanted to personalize your labels in Design Space, you could do the actual names of the people. But since I don't have everything that organized yet for gift giving, um, of course I know who I'm buying for and everything, but I don't know how many of each I'm going to need. So I'm just going to go ahead and write them in later. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is once I have everything exactly how I like it, this is the time to make any final changes that you need to do. I am going to have my cursor do the whole label, so I'm going to select everything. So it's selecting the text, the wreath, and the white circular label. And then I'm going to come down here with everything selected, and I'm going to flatten it. This is going to take the file from a cut file to a print then cut file. Of course, we already have the images that are print then cut, but it's going to take the text and the label, and it's going to make them print then cut as well. And it's going to just flatten everything together to make it one. So right now you'll see what's selected. We have these four little layers. And then when I click flatten, it flattens it into one that is print and cut. Okay, so now here is one of our labels. It's adorable. I'm going to go ahead and do the same to this one, selecting everything, click flatten, and to this, select everything and click flatten. Okay, so now you'll see in our layers panel we have everything as print and cut. So I'm going to move these to the side and then I'm going to go ahead and create our little template for printing. So we know that print and cut has a size restriction. So you can quickly see that if you forget what that size restriction is, you can simply take one of your print and cuts and you can size it way up and then you'll get an alert over here. And when you click on that alert, it will tell you to reduce your image size to 6.75 by 9.25 or less because that is the size restriction. So if you ever forget what those size restrictions are, just drag one of your print then cut files big and it will show you the alert and give you those exact dimensions. So I'm going to click back because I want to make sure that my label, it goes back to my original size. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to shapes over here and I'm going to click square. I'm going to unlock my square and then I am going to come up to size and I'm going to retype those dimensions in 6.75 by 9.25. And this will give us our little area that we can print on for printable vinyl. So this is giving us our print and cut size restrictions right here. Okay, so I can go ahead, I can just keep this black right now or whatever dark gray. Um, and then what I can do is I'm going to send this all the way to the back is I can bring my little labels over here. And I can fit them within my little restricted area and it will just help me make sure that I can get the most out of my printable vinyl. So then what I can do is I can duplicate the labels that I'd like by selecting duplicate and then I can just create a little variety over here. So what I'm going to do instead is I am actually going to make three pages and I'm going to do my little um, labels individually on each page. So I'm going to group them by label type because I think that I'll get the most out of my material doing it this way. So I'm just going to duplicate these and see how many I can fit on one page. Let's see here. And I am so close, but we will see if this works. Again, you can do a variety page where you put, you know, a a little variety on each page, but I think I might get a little bit more out of it if I do it this way. So now what I'm going to do is I am just going to click all of my labels, make sure on the um, layers panel that they're all selected, and I'm going to attach them together. This way the Cricut knows that I want them to all be placed together on that sheet. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that to the side, and then I am going to do the same process, but with labels. So I'm going to make a page of the stocking labels. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate and then bring one over here. 
And then what I'm going to do is, because I like things to look just so on the page, is I am going to say align, and I am going to say align bottom to make sure they're completely straight. Then I'll attach these two together, and then I can duplicate them so that then I have the next row just like this. Duplicate again, the next row, and I'll just keep duplicating and placing my little labels. Okay, now that I have all of them on there, I'm going to select all of my lines of labels, and then I am going to say align, and I'm going to say distribute vertically, and then I'm going to say align, and I'm going to say align left. Okay, and that just makes sure they're all lined up. Now again, I can go down and say attach, and that just makes sure that they all print in this little fashion over here, just like that. So I can go ahead and drag these to the side as well. I have another page, and then everything is so big in this screen. So it's they're big files, so sometimes it takes just a little time. Okay, so then I can do the exact same for this. So again, just duplicate, and then grab both of them, say align, align bottom, and then I'm going to attach these two together and duplicate them again. Okay, and then again, after you've made all of the alignments, make sure you attach them all together so that they will be printed and cut in the exact placement that you have worked so hard to do. Okay, so now what I can do is I can take this print and cut template that I have and I can hide that because I no longer need it. Now make sure that you save, so I'm going to go ahead and save this. Make sure you save this so that if you come back and need more, you have um, a little file that's already ready to go and you can just come in and do the printing without all of the designing. Okay, so here are all of our little labels. I think they're so cute. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I have my Explore selected. I'm now going to say Make It. So now you'll see that we have three pages of print then cut labels, and they are all in the same fashion that we have designed in the Canvas screen. They are so cute. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I am going to select Continue and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to send my design to the printer. So I'm going to say send to printer. It's going to go ahead and send my first design. It'll show you the preview of the design it's going to send. I'm using my home printer and it's just an HP OfficeJet Pro 9010 series. I'm just doing one copy, but this is where you would make elections for additional copies if you would want to make more. And then I'm going to turn bleed off for this particular one because my stickers are white. If you had a sticker that was a different color, then you would want to turn bleed on just to make sure it gets a really nice crisp cut, but this isn't going to matter for this particular design. So bleed is turned off for mine, and then I'm going to go ahead and load my printable vinyl into my machine, and then I will go ahead and show you how the Cricut will cut it out. After it's printing, you're going to come back in. I have my dial set to custom. I'm going to browse all materials and I'm just going to come down to vinyl and my selection is going to be printable vinyl and then I'll say done. Then I'll go ahead and load everything onto my machine mat and then get everything cut out. Okay, so when I went to print out my design, this is what came out on my printer. So I had the text but I did not have my little wreaths on there and I did this on printable vinyl. So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you always do your test print on a piece of paper first because now I wasted this vinyl. Of course, I'll find something to do with this so that I can still reuse it, but what I made the mistake of doing was doing this on printable vinyl first. So have you guys ever had this happen where some of your image has printed but some of it has not? I've only had this happen one other time. And what I ended up doing was I ended up re-uploading and re, well re-downloading my image from design bundles or wherever you purchase it from so that's what I did as I went and re-downloaded my image re-uploaded it into Cricut Design Space and then I redid my labels and it came out really great the first time and exact or the second time and exactly as it should so if that has happened to you this is the second time it's happened to me it happened to me in the fall as well with another design and what I just did again is I re-downloaded my file and then I re-uploaded it into 
design space and then try to test print it on just a piece of paper to make sure that it prints out with your whole design on it before you print it on your expensive printable vinyl. So that is just a little workaround if for some reason this happens to you because it's really frustrating because you're really confused on why your entire image did not print. I went ahead and tested all of my others and they did perfectly the first time and I tested them on paper. Oh, this was my other test. Um, I tested these on paper before sending them with printable vinyl. So go ahead, do the paper before you do the printable vinyl. It will really save some frustration. It's frustrating anyway, but again, re-uploading is um, seems to be what works there. Okay, so hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but if it does, I wanted to give you a little bit of backstory. That way um, you know how to try and fix it. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mat in here and I'm going to get the labels cut out. Okay, so I just have my blue light grip mat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my printable vinyl right on my mat. And it's in the upper left. And then I'm gonna take my brayer tool and I'm just going to make sure that it is flat on my mat. Okay, so that looks really, really nice. Now, one thing you wanna make sure that you do is you wanna make sure that your machine is calibrated before you do a print and cut project. So I'll put a link to a video on how to calibrate your machine. It's super fast and easy, but you wanna do that before you do a print and cut project. It helps with the accuracy of your cut. Okay, loading my machine. I'm gonna bring my machine in here a little bit. And then I'm going to say, again, in Cricut Design Space, I have my material set to printable vinyl and I'm selecting the flashing Cricut button. It's going to pull it all the way in and then it's going to bring out a little flashlight so you'll see a little light and it's going to go ahead and scan the little registration boxes. So you want to make sure that those box that box stays on your design because that is going to be used by the Cricut to determine where inside the box your design is and then it will know where to cut. Okay, so it's all done. I'm gonna go ahead and unload my mat and then I'm going to turn my mat over and bend my mat away from my printable vinyl. And then what I can do is I like to take my weeding tool and I like to remove the surrounding area. And then left on the sheet are just my standalone little gift labels. So I like to do this because then once it's time to go and use them, I can just really easily grab the label and peel it up. Another thing that I like to do is I like to trim the edges. So I'll show you how to do that as well. So I'm just going to bring my paper trimmer in here. And then I'm just going to set my principal vinyl into the paper trimmer and I'm just going to trim those little edges off just so it's nice and even around there. It just gives it a nice clean look. Okay, there we go. And now we have our little sheet of gift labels. So I'm going to go ahead and print out my remaining two sheets of labels and get them cut and then I'll show you how they turn out. Okay, so all of my little sheets are cut and I trimmed them down with my paper trimmer and then I'm just taking away the extra from this final sheet to make it easier to peel off. And this is how they turned out. They turned out super, super sweet. I love how they look. And aside from a little glitch, I'm not sure what happened with that, but I'm happy that it ended up working out in the end. But the wreaths turned out really sweet. I love the little cars and then the little stockings as well. Okay, and I also wanted to mention that I did a couple tests with some pens that will be good on this printable vinyl. And I tested out just a Sharpie and that worked out great. And then I tested out a little pilot pen that this is a Precision V5 um, Extra Fine. And I'm sure more than one pen works. So what I do is I just take a little scrap piece. As you saw earlier, there's little scrap pieces that come off of your printable vinyl. And then I just write with my pen and then I just make sure that it doesn't rub off. That way it doesn't smudge or anything, but 
these two pens did a really good job so I will probably use one of those again just test out whatever pen you are hoping to use just to make sure it doesn't smudge so that it doesn't ruin your little label all right I hope this was helpful I think these turned out really really sweet and I think they'll be really pretty on the top of the packages be sure as always to like this video share this video and let others know that we are doing 25 days of Christmas crafts over here and I hope to see you all in the next video